praise the Lord. And today is the um, 10th of June, 2023, Saturday, June 10th, 2023. And I'm going to be speaking very briefly, by the grace of God, on the powers of witchcraft. I mean, it's very important I speak on this topic today, on the powers of witchcraft. Because it baffles me that the, the main victims of witchcraft are Christians, especially African Christians. I'm going to explain this to you. And because I have, I have seen situations whereby a Christian from African sector or region who have been in the Christian faith for decades, 20, 30, 40 years, being killed by a baby witch, by a witch, someone that, that has practiced witchcraft not even up to a week, but was able to take a life of a Christian who had been in that faith for decades. And that makes me to wonder how is that possible. But I, I was under the unction of the Holy Spirit and got this revelation because I was asking this question, why? You see a little witch just initiated into wizardry and the person will exercise powers over a Christian and the life of a Christian will be taken. They can plan accidents. They can just take the life of a Christian. Just like that. Why did I say Africans? Because when I was praying about this, I was meditating and uh, trying to understand why. And the Lord told me because Africans have been exposed by the teachings have been exposed to powers of witchcraft, they have received that fear in them that witches possesses authority over their lives. So they have regarded witches as their enemies. Whereas reverse should be the case. When you go to many African churches, their prayer topic is every witch, every witch withholding my destiny. Every they fight, they engage in warfare battle. Whenever you, they pray, die, die in the name of Jesus, you power of witch, die, die. When you attach so much importance to something that is so insignificant, it means that you are elevating that stuff. It means when you measure in your minor, you make that minor a priority over the major issue in your life. Now, why did I say Africa? Having been in Western world, even while I was in Asia, South Korea to be precise, I never saw or witnessed the church praying against witches. Never. Never. They never prayed. Oh, bind. No. They give glory to God. In Canada, the same thing. Coming here in America, oh, when you go to church, it's an atmosphere of worship. People just worship the Lord. Nobody prays, oh, this week, except is a church pastored by an African. I'm not talking of African-American. I mean African immigrants in America, they, when they want to pray, this witch, this witch, this witch, this witch, and they make themselves so vulnerable. That's what the Lord was explaining to me. And I felt the need I want to share this with you. When you go to Western churches and they want to sing praises to God, it's like they are having fun. They are communicating with God. They just worship God. But Africa is all about witch, 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 witch. A witch can easily kill a pastor. I want to share a quick story. In the process of this, I just remembered a testimony. 
that was in 2018 when we first uh, relocated to Iowa about the first year being in Iowa and uh, you know each time the Lord want to speak to me he asked me to give him time and I don't like to do six to six fasting if I want to seek the face of the Lord I do it outrightly so I, I did the fasting for 14 days there was no food I didn't eat for 14 days when I mean no food on the last day I experienced a lot of manifest my wife witnessed a lot of manifestation and encounter it was so sweet to be in God's presence so we decided to worship in a church and we went to that church to worship and I told my wife please do not tell anybody that your husband is a servant of the most High. please don't I want to live a normal life please my wife said okay we agreed she has seen the powers of God in the life of the husband so I knew what I was telling her I said please let me just live a normal life you know I don't want to answer for you know when I dress and people are like, okay I don't want to explain myself to anybody so we went to church after the church service a young man um, immigrant from Nigeria you know getting to know that we are Nigerians so he met my wife and uh, we started talking oh why did you guys move here and he said okay my wife she came here for her residency and we started talking I left him and my wife because I was still recovering I just was ending the fasting so that I had no more strength to stand I needed to go to the car and sit so I, I left him to be discussing with my wife and he was surprised I trusted my wife to be with him and I left so the guy started telling my, my wife started, they started discussing and he has some issues a big immigration issues and uh, he was afraid of being deported based on those challenges he was having so he had he had been to so many places they prayed for him they told him about a certain dream he had he they interpreted the dream that he was going to be deported so he was so scared and he shared with my wife and uh, to pray with him my wife said i think you should talk to my husband this is a woman I, I pray warn before we came to the church. Please don't tell anybody that I, I could pray. Don't tell anybody. But my wife was like, you could talk to my husband. Um, the young man felt maybe I could be an immig immigration officer or something like that. He said, talk to him. He could pray for you. Oh, the guy was like, okay. So the guy came to me, walked up to the car and greeted me. I said he spoke to my wife about something bothering him and uh, my wife said they, you know he could discuss with me I said what is it and he shared the same story and uh, he's so afraid of being deported and people told him oh this is the problem this is the pro he must he will be deported he had a dream so he shared that dream with me and the dream had no connection in that dream he I think he said that there was an accident or something and he was stepping on dead bodies he was the only survivor and he was stepping on de dead bodies and that was the dream he had I when he shared that I said and they told you this dream means you are going to be deported he said yes I said this is not a dream this is a revelation he said really I said yeah I said do you know what this revelation means he says no I said okay you don't need prayers you need to forgive the Lord is telling me now that you need to forgive your father. The guy looked at me. This is somebody we are just meeting. I'm just meeting him for the first time. I said, you have to forgive your father. I said, in fact, your father will die in a week. I told him, your father will die in a week. He is dead. He's, he's dead. Your father is dead. That dream, your father is dead already. But he's a living dead. So you have to call your father and you have less than one week to call your father and forgive your father that he may forgive and pray for you. If your father dies with that, those things you see is your dreams that is a dream, is your purpose. You are bearing your, your purpose. You see those dead folks you are stepping on? That revelation God showed you? If that man died, that is your father. His prayer over your life is more effective than my prayer. The guy was looking over me, at me rather. I said, call your father. You don't have any witch disturbing you. But is your heart filled with unforgiveness? Is what 
you need to deal with. And after you talk to your father, your immigration papers will be released. And let me tell you, after speaking with your father, the immigration officer sitting on your immigration papers will have no alternative, no choice than to release your papers. To the glory of God, a few days later he called me and said he spoke with his father. You know, he wept and they talked. Then a week later he called me that his father died. His father died and he became an apostle of Christ. And he became, he started working with me because he saw what I didn't pray for him. I was under an unction and I just told him. Like I always say, blessed are you when the prophet tells you the right thing. I'm not a prophet, I'm just a vessel. It happened here in Iowa. And today, uh, last weekend, he came with his mother. First time I'm meeting his mother. And we share the same testimony. He has his papers now. He's doing good to the glory of God. Now, he had thought that witches were after him because that's what they were taught to believe in Nigeria. But his heart was something that was bewitching him. His heart was manipulating him. Now, there is only thing that can make a witch to have power over you. Witches lack the authority. But when you give them room, they utilize it. Because devil never makes mistake when it comes to dealing with a child of God. If you give him room, he took permission to deal with Job, but Job never gave him room. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, it says, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own. So when you contaminate your body, when you messed up your body, if you are a Christian, you're a lip-singing prayer warrior, you go to church, you pray against witches, and when you leave the church, you go to a prostitute heart and defy your body. When you preach the gospel and you sleep with the beautiful sister in the church, you have exposed yourself to the power of witches to deal with you because at that moment you have defied the temple of God where the Holy Spirit dwells. And because it is called, he is the Holy Spirit, a gentle spirit, he won't argue with you. Because you have given him a quick notice, he will leave. Gently, he will leave. So that young man contaminated his body by being unforgiving. That Lord told me, many of us in Africa, we are psycho-emotional Christians. We are emotional worshipping God. But in our heart, we are wicked. Our heart is filled with wickedness, unforgiveness, malicious thoughts. Christians, they fast, they pray, but their heart is contaminated. So when you see a little witch, it's easy to deal with. I said, Americans are the most generous people I've ever seen. Americans, they may not be as prayerful as we are in Africa, but when it comes to generosity, you can't equal them for anything. And that's why, that's why witches cannot handle them the way they deal with those of them in Africa that pray. When you look at them, their faces are like the Pharisees. When you look at most African Christians, their faces are like the Pharisees. Very holy, outwardly, but inwardly wicked. If you are an African, you can relate with what I'm talking about because I'm a bona fide African. I'm a tongue-speaking African. I know what I mean. We are so unforgiving. I always preach this in my home. I say, my wife, please, honey, let's forgive everybody that wronged us. When they come, please have an open heart to welcome. Don't hold grudges. A lot of people have helped, lifted them up. They've stabbed me at the back, but my heart is filled with love. Whenever they come to repentance, I don't discuss them because I understand forgiving them is for my own good, is for my own safety. 
Because when you don't forgive, now you failed. You failed in the sense that you have made yourself vulnerable to the powers of hell. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against spiritual wickedness. In the high places, in the heavenly places. Why did he say the heavenly places? He didn't say in the hellish places, in the heavenly places. He says, put on the whole armor of God. So when you refuses to forgive, you have failed. But when you apply Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 to 18, no power of which will harm you. Mark my word. When you apply Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 to 18, no power of which can harm you. And when you reverence what the Bible says, 1 Corinthians 6, 19, no power of which can harm you. Stop praying against witches. They are insignificant. Witches should be the ones praying against you that you may not remember them. Honestly, you are their major problem. They are your minor problem. So why major it in your minor is my question. In America, we worship God. I can't remember the last time I, I can't pray for witches. No, because we government, they do everything for us. I have light. I have electricity. I have power. I have energy. I have gas. I buy gas. I have whatever it takes. But in Nigeria, for instance, my beautiful home country, when there is no power, we start praying. I remember then in the church, they pray, pray, what? Pray, power of uh, um, the witches, they've taken the light. Pray, pray. No, they didn't take the light. It's the corrupt government that made the light not to be stable. It's the corrupt government. So during the time of election, you have to vote out the corrupt government and stop praying. Stop making the witches seem so important. And let me tell you this. Lastly, there are two places powers have been demonstrated. Take note. Two places in the world powers have been demonstrated per seconds. Every second powers have been demonstrated. The first place, take note, very important. In the marketplaces. Because of time, I won't go deep. But I just want to give you, in the marketplaces, it's the second place in the sea, river, ocean. I'm just classifying them, but generalize it in the sea. These two places. This is where they do their coven. They have their incantation, enchantation. When they do, they will go and bury, they do all those stuff. Market and river. In the scripture, Wherever you see market, it's been referred as places where power is being demonstrated. But there is only one place where authority and power is demonstrated. One place, authority and power is demonstrated. Now, which is make use of power, remember? Power is, could be illegal, but authority is legal. Only one place, and that place is in the temple of God. And where is the temple of God located? In your body. In your body. So you have power, you have authority. But because you, you are too quick to defy your body, devil capitalizes on, you, on your error to deal with you. So I, hate, I don't want to hear that somebody died. I say, oh, this witch, or this person killed this person, or this accident. How dare the devil? Who, on what basis? On what basis? When two power meets, the lesser power will bow. And the devil is the lesser one. So stop glorifying devil. We Africans must stop this. Evil power, bow in the name of Jesus. Bow in the name of Jesus. And devil will be jumping. Jumping. Die, 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 die in the name of... Stop that nonsense. Stop glorifying the devil. Show me in the Bible where Jesus prayed for witches. Die, die. Say... He rebuked, which is we see and start confessing. Peter, all the disciples, the same thing. As the follower of Christ, you will do greater works than he did. God bless you. 
in Jesus' name. Amen.